woman. There are 76 million of us just here in the US. We are the biggest generation that ever existed. We were called the me ones, the crazy ones, and boy, do we know what that means, don't we? In fact, we have reinvented every single phase of our life. We were the yuppies, we were the hippies. We like innovation. Well, now we are in the winter of our life. And I can assure you, this is not going to be your average winter. I invite you to join me at Boomerology Reviews every single week so we can figure out how boomers are reshaping this phase of their lives. Join me. This episode of Boomerology Revealed is brought to you by Standard, your best option for mobility products. Be independent with Standard.com. Welcome to Boomerology Revealed. I'm Shahar Boyayan, your host. Did you know that divorce rate amongst people older than 50 has more than doubled in the last few years? I think that's impressive, and I want to take a look on why. Plus, we are going to talk about the topic that I'm not into very much, exercise, and a trip to memory lane. Let's watch. We are going to talk about divorce after 50. You know, there is a study showing that the divorce rate for people after 50 has doubled in the last few years. And they list some of the reasons that might be. For example, eradication of social stigma. Today, it's okay to be divorced, while some years ago, that was a huge deal. Self-fulfillment, I'm now going to look for the things I like outside the marriage. And elimination of the need to care for children. Many, they say, waited until the children were out of the home, became empty nesters, and then they decided to divorce. Well, I decided to invite some people to tell me their stories and give their two cents on this. So here I have Dave Mackey. Thank you very much for being here. Be. Tell me a little bit about your story around divorce. Oh gosh, well, I'm on marriage three. Oh boy. So there's been a couple. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I think the the first divorce was really pretty much my fault, some immaturity on my part. Okay, uh, and how old were you when you divorced? I was 31, 32, early 30s. Okay. And then uh, my second wife, when she came along, it was uh, party time. She was a party girl, and she wanted to go out and dance and have a good time all the time. And after another couple of decades, it pretty much wore me out. I, I was ready to settle down a little bit more, get more serious. And she was still going. She was still going. I know the so. feeling. Okay. <laughs> so um, I was about in my mid-50s mm -hmm. and uh, decided to, I mean... I was going one way, she was going another, and uh, we, we didn't really have anything in common any longer because I was no longer interested in that party lifestyle. I, I wanted to be a good boy finally, <laughs> you know, a little late, uh -huh. 55 is a little late to be a good boy, but... But uh, you decided to, with the divorce or...? Yeah, yeah, I, I started getting more interested in uh, the church. Mm -hmm. I was baptized into the Mormon church. Um, she didn't really want to have anything to do with that. Understandably, it wasn't her lifestyle. And she continued going her route, and I went mine. And then uh, it, it was a quick and quick and simple divorce. Mm -hmm. uh, I ended up with the, the two little ones um, in my custody. And uh, one thing led to another, and we ended up here in Salt Lake uh, again, where I grew up. So you divorced after uh, 55, and you still had two young children with you? I did. That you took custody? <laughs> I, I did, Okay. Yeah. So one of these is not right, right? You didn't wait until you were an empty nester? No. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm a slow learner. <laughs> Hi, I'm, my name is Edie Stumpf, and um, Shahar has asked me to talk about my divorce. I've been married for 24 years. And to, uh, I was living in New York, had three children, and it's when my middle daughter was eight years old, she confided in me that her father, my husband, uh, sexually abused her. Uh, it was really kind of hard to believe, you know, and in that split second when she told me, I didn't... I had this feeling of disbelief and then, but I wanted to believe her too, because what eight year old makes this up, you know? So um, it took, and honestly it did take a second, but I felt I had to believe her. <laughs> and um, 
threw him out immediately. Many years of therapy and so on and so forth. Um, I didn't, oddly enough, <laughs> did not divorce him right away because the therapist um, said, hey, you know what, this was a one-time thing, he's really sorry, and uh, it's never going to happen again. And I always felt that because uh, I've, growing up, I was always told I wasn't enough, I wasn't smart enough, I wasn't enough. I always thought, well, she's a therapist, she went to college, she's smarter than me, she knows better than me, so I took him back. And for 10 years, uh, we all lived together, and uh, at one point, I just couldn't take it anymore because, uh, you know, I was in pain. So, but I hung on because of the kids, and I realized that, you know, that his contribution to the family uh, was, there was not, no contribution whatsoever. So I was at that point 48 years old and my youngest daughter was um, 14. And I thought, I'm not getting any younger. <laughs> I, it, and I need to get out of this marriage. I need to um, get my kids out of this scenario. And I just up and left. And uh, it was hard, and it, it, yeah, it was very difficult because things like this don't really happen to us, you know. So you kept it a secret. Um, you just didn't you didn't share this kind of information with anybody, and so it was there was no one for me to confide in or anything either, you know. But I did have a, have have. I'm sorry, I've had enough. And when I finally told the kids what was going to happen, all three of them, because I have three daughters. Uh, at that time, they ranged from ages, um, well, the youngest one was maybe about five. Anyway, um, they all went, yes, mom, but what took you so long? And here I was hanging on for them. And um, they, were, they wanted out as, mad, as that much as I did. Interestingly enough, they're, you know, they're, they're really, after several years from the first marriage and even after about six years now uh, from the second marriage uh, divorcing there's really no hard feelings I mean uh, there there were at the time of course but when you look back and and there are there's someone special like that who was special at one time you had children with this person and they were meaningful to you if you can look past the little problems they be, they become meaningful again mm -hmm. I mean we I go visit my kids in California all the time. I see one or the other, uh, or both, you know, and, and it, it's always a hug and good to see you type of thing. So there's no hard feelings any longer. Mm -hmm. um, when you divorced the second time, so you were 55, yeah. uh, was age, did age play any role in that? Did you think I'm too old for this or not, or no? Um, I might have been getting a little tired. <laughs> so we are not going to have a fourth I, I, I learned my last dance. <laughs> so at that time, uh, did you have a career? Did you have a business? No, so I was, well, um, I had been a stay-at-home mom for a long time. When my youngest one finally went back to school, to, well, to nursery school, um, I got a job at the nursery school part-time as an aide. And uh, the director of the school encouraged me to go get my certification. So actually I went to school and I got what they call a CDA, a, a Childhood Development Associate degree. So I became a teacher. So I taught, taught nursery school for 10 years. And when I decided to divorce, I needed to make a huge break. So I lived in New York, <laughs> born and raised in New York. And that's where I was when I made the decision to leave. I opened up an atlas. I had my daughter take her finger and, you know, I said, wherever your finger lands, that's where we're going to move. Because I, I knew I had to leave New York. And her finger landed in Montana. And no offense to anyone who lives in Montana, but that's not where I wanted to be. <laughs> so we said, you know what? I'm tired of the snow. I'm tired of the ice and the cold. Let's just move to California because that was the furthest I could get away from New York without having to cross an ocean, you know, and I packed up my kids. Well, one went off to college in Colorado. 
Um, the other two packed them up and came out to California, no friends, nowhere to live, no job, no nothing. And I just started my life all over again. Do you agree with the statements that uh, it's easier today to divorce after 50 because there is no social stigma? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, it's uh, as far as society is concerned, it's it's very commonplace. In, in my opinion, not a great thing, but, mm -hmm. but what do you do when two people go in two different directions and it's a serious enough diversion in, in the opposite directions? Do you think uh, the second divorce, uh, did you have any emotional ups and downs because that it was coming to an end or, you know, you just looked at that and said, okay, it's time, it's time to move Oh, sure, away. I, I, I did, but we were already starting to live this opposite lifestyle thing. A and she had found friends uh, who she would participate with now without me. Um, it, it, so it just didn't make any sense, you know, to stay together any longer. I got married again. Um, I never expected to get married because I was kind of a man hater at that time. <laughs> okay. I was, you know, dating and whatever, you know, but, um, never expected to get married. Um, and this one guy found me, AOL used to have like a little dating thing years ago, okay? And he found me on there, and I lived in Norco, he lived in Corona, we're in Southern California. He was so sweet, and he wasn't like any of the other guys that I had met um, on any dating site at all. So we finally met um, at a little restaurant called Honey's, and we have been, we had been an inseparable ever since and it was like you know god actually did bring us together you know so um and we got married about a year later and um and then three and a half years ago he passed away oh. ah. <laughs> how is life today life today um is fun i'm having a good time um Still missing my husband, <laughs> but um, and like my therapist always says that grief comes in waves. So I have, you know, days that really crash, <laughs> but days that I'm really and most of the time now my days are are just um, they're full of love and fun and excitement, and I'm having a great time. I'm living my life to the fullest because I'm still here. Um, so I've. You know, I'm moving forward and, um, and dating and <laughs> having a blast. <laughs> so, of course, nobody recommends divorce for anybody because we, we want to have a happy family sure. life. But if people face themselves in this time of their life, when they're 50 and older and they, they think that's the only solution, would you say, okay, go for it? Yeah, and everybody's de definition of the only solution mm -hmm. is different. You know, it takes a lot more. For some people to get divorced than others, some people are a lot more dedicated to it. As a kid, I never, I never dreamt I would ever, at any time in my life, get divorced. Mm -hmm. My mom and dad, I didn't even hear them fight, you know. And so, when I was first married, and these disagreements and discontent, you know, all the discontent came up, uh, and I was surprised. I'm like, wait, this isn't the way marriage it's is supposed, supposed to be. Not supposed to be like. That. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly, I'm, I'm kind of surprised that I'm on marriage three. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not like some people who can live alone. I have, you know, I, I very much enjoy having companionship. And, and so um, I welcomed it. I didn't think it was going to happen a third time, but um, I, w I welcomed it. And you're happy. happy. I, absolutely. That's good. Thank yeah. you very much. Okay, thanks. The product I'm going to show you now, it's really one that I like. I actually have two of them, for real, in my living room. It stays on each side of my couch, and I use it every single night. I really love it. It's the Assisted Tray by Standard.com. You know, it's multi-use thing you can, you can use for many different reasons. The, the reason I use is because, first of all, it has a handle, and I can, you know, go get up off my couch very, very easily. But it comes with a swivel tray that you can use to eat if you like to eat while watching TV. I like to make crafts, so I do beading and I do felting using those trays every single night, and I love it. It's really, really a great product. I actually have that product for at least about three years. I really like that.
The assisted tray is a couch side handle that makes it easy to stand from your favorite couch or chair. It comes with a convenient multi-use swivel tray so you can eat, surf the web, work or simply have handy items close by if you need it. And like all standard products, it blends in with your living room. It's just like another piece of furniture so you can maintain the comforting feeling of your home which I think it's important because not something that stands out too much. It's just part of my living room. And when I sit on my couch to watch TV, I just put those two trays and I'm a happy camper. Let's talk about the greatest generation, right? People that were born between 1925 and 1945, most of our parents, right? It's a very interesting generation because the, the size of that generation was 62 million. And they tend to be very loyal to institutions and their employers. I grew up with my parents telling me that I should get a job, probably either an engineer or a doctor, right? And be with that job my whole life. That would bring me success and stability. And a lot of that, of course, was due to the great depression where they felt the need to feel secure, right? So that was a big characteristic in their personality. Uh, they comprise of the oldest of the old in society, okay? And they are very uncomfortable with computer technology. With that said, also that is changing a little bit because it, technology has provided them with a way to be in touch with the rest of their family and to know about their grandchildren. So they are coming and using Facebook and social media as the other generations, but they do feel a little uncomfortable with that. You know, they were the, the ones that told us that everything was possible in life if we only fought for that. And that was a very great advice. Hello, my name is Kara Clapp. I'm a family nurse practitioner and I have a PhD and we're here to talk about exercise. I know it might sound kind of funny that a woman like me with my shape, I'm not this beanpole, but exercise after 50 is a wonderful way to ward off depression because you're building those endorphins, you're releasing um, uh, stress hormones throughout the day, doing work, chasing the grandkids, you know, just a whole variety of things. And we have a tendency in this culture to underestimate the effects of stress. So it's really important that exercise burn those things up. Some people believe um, that if they exercise an hour a day, that makes them healthier. And what research is currently showing is that's not necessarily true. So for someone like me who has always hated exercise, that is great news. What the research is now showing um, is intensity means a great deal. You can do shorter exercise periods, 15, 20 minutes, but if you do interval training, high intensity with the large muscles, so you're maybe doing an elliptical, doing a bicycle, climbing some stairs, not my favorite. Most of us have some knees that we have to, you know, pay attention to. Swimming, so just whatever you find interesting, just rev up the intensity for about two minutes and then slow down and do your pacing again. If you do that about eight to 10 repetitions, not only do you get great endurance over time, but it also trains that heart muscle. And you remember we always tell the men not to go out and shovel snow in the winter because they're doing these explosive movements and they're holding their breath. And that's what creates the situation for the heart attack. Because if we train the heart muscle for endurance, it's not ready to do the explosive activities like shoveling snow and that's why our men have trouble in the winter with heart attacks so just remember short duration intensity um, changing and you're gonna feel great I was thinking the other day about some cool stuff I used to do as a kid and there was one I call toy that I used to love and it was the View Masters. Do you remember? Maybe you had one of those. You know, it looked like kind of a binocular and you had the round things and had stories or f scenes from films and you would just go do it very tacky. You would do this and the next slide would come up and you would put it against the light so you could see. I loved my view masters really I would do anything to get more stories and I would collect those you know round slides all in boxes it was really something special for me I used that for many for a very long time of course my favorite one was some slides with the monkeys on it I don't know how many thousands and thousands of times I went through the same 
desk looking at those pictures of Dave Jones and Mickey Dolins. I really used to love that. What was your favorite toy? I think it's very healthy sometimes for we really to go back to our past and see the things we were grateful for, where we had a lot of fun, you know, and just share that with people. We live in a world today that we have so many options, so many toys out there, so many gadgets to buy all the time. But, you know, many times they become meaningless because they're, they're just more stuff. Because in the past we didn't have that many options, some things were really special to us. Learn to share those experiences with people around you. I hope you enjoyed the show this week. If you did, don't forget to share, thumbs up, rate our channel. These are the type of things that keep us going. And I'll meet you next week at Boomerology Revealed. This episode of Boomerology Revealed is brought to you by Standard, your best option for mobility products. Be independent with Standard.com.